Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the 5th round of the 1965 season, the British Grand Prix. It was held on the 10th of July, it had 23 entries, 20 of them took part in the race with 6 ending up retiring. The race consisted of 80 laps completed in 2 hours, 5 minutes and 25 seconds. Jim Clark started from pole with Graham Hill in second, Ginster started from third but retired on lap 26 due to a fuel injection problem. Stewart was 4th on the grid, 35th and Spence started from 6th. Clark drove a superb race to win the British Grand Prix from Hill, who finished just 3.2 seconds after Clark. Surtees gained 2 positions to finish 3rd, 27.6 seconds after Clark. Spence moved up from 6th to 4th, he was 39.6 seconds behind. Stewart dropped from 4th to 5th and was 1 minute 14.6 seconds behind. And rounding off the top 6 was Dan Gurney who started from 7th. He was one lap down. Graham Hill was the fastest man of the race, posting a time of 1 minute 32.2 seconds on the final lap of the race. Welcome to Silverton, where a lap starts off with a relatively long run into turn 1, a fast right-hander. Pay attention though as it is easy to let the car go wide. Next is Maggots, a fast left-hander that takes us into Beckett's a medium speed right-hander, which itself leads into Chapel, a fast left-hander leading on to the longest straight on the track. Next is Stowe, a medium speed right-hander and after a short sprint we come through club, another medium speed right-hander. Next is Abby, a fast left-hand sweeper. And finally, the last corner of the track, turn 8, woodcut, a fast right-hander that brings us around onto the main straight and that is a lap around the Silverstone circuit. And here we are in qualifying for the British Grand Prix, coming around to set our first flying lap, a 131.303, that's not a very fast lap time but hopefully we can improve a little bit on that, that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, we are at the moment almost 4 seconds slower than Joe Sifford's poll time, but here we are coming around to try and improve that time, and we do improve to a 129.640. That's obviously much much better, that's just 2 seconds of poll time. Let's see if we can squeeze out a little bit more out of that. That would be absolutely fantastic if we could do that, as now coming around through this right-hander, I go a little bit wide, lose control of the car, almost flip upside down, and I try to get back on my pace. I was actually fast up until that point, but from there on I couldn't gain any more speed. I don't know why, but I kept going slower and slower after that. Anyway, here are the previous British Grand Prix winners. Last time we won here was actually last season, so that's quite nice. Hopefully we can do that again here today. Anyway, we have Mike Spence on pole with Joe Sifford in second. Richard Atwood is third, followed by Paul Hawkins in fourth. Richie Ginster starting from fifth with Andy Higgs in sixth. Dan Gurney is seventh, followed by Jack Brabham in eighth. Pedro Rodriguez tenth. Bruce McLaren starting from tenth. Jochen Rindt is eleventh, followed by Ines Ireland in twelfth. Denny Holm is thirteenth. Fourteenth is Frank Gardner. In 15th we have Maston Gregory followed by David Prophet in 16th. In 17th we have Ian Raby followed by John Rhodes in 18th, a new face on the grid here today. In 19th we have Joe Bonnier, 20th is Bob Anderson and bringing up the uh, rear of the grid is Nino Vaccarella in 21st. So that is the grid lineup for the British Grand Prix and Hopefully things will go, well, as good as possible. And we are off. I tried to squeeze past, but there was no no room there. Someone hit me from behind uh, as a result of that, but that's okay. And, well, it's not really okay because we lost a position there to uh, Jochen, uh, to Rich, uh, Richie Ginster and Bruce McLaren now. So we're down in A. We, lost, we already lost two positions. However, I tried to inch myself ahead of... Bruce McLaren and we uh, did it quite well through there and as we now come into Beckett we are back in 7th so that's nice hopefully we can catch Richie Ginzer for and pass him for 6th place that would be absolutely fantastic as we take another look at the start of the race and there we see the Cooper crashing into us as I try to kind of get around the cars in front but there was no not enough room to make to do anything so I was pretty much uh, bogged down there I couldn't do anything unfortunately but hopefully as the race progresses we can 
gain a few more positions as we now come through this right hander and once again Bruce McLaren gets in front of us so we drop down to 8th Jack Brabham now looking for a opportunity to overtake and as we come through club here he manages to uh, pull the maneuver and we are now we now drop to 9th not, not very good but I'm hoping that we can uh, get around as we come towards the end of the lap here Pedro Rodriguez and Jochen Red both pass us and we are now down in 11th that's not very good I go very wide out of Woodcut there and Innes Ireland also overtakes us we are now down in 11th and Frank Gardner is looking for a, an opportunity to overtake us as well however I shut the door we shut the door and that uh, well we're safe for now as I try to overtake Ireland and we do in fact overtake and we are now back up in 11 looking at a an opportunity to overtake you can he breaks a little bit early and we make the maneuver stick through back is there so we are now back up in 10th moving on to lap 3 now and Jochen Rint once again overtakes us for 10th uh, I we make contact with him and Ireland manages so squeeze past as well so we are now back down in 12th with Frank Gardner on our gearbox as we come through Abbey here going wide all three of us Jochen Rint, Ireland and myself as well now starting lap 4 here and Frank Gardner is having a push coming into um, Cops here and he manages to overtake us quite easily on the inside goes wide we make contact with him and we are down in 13th now had to pull out of that I didn't want to damage my car too much and well managed to do that but we lost a b bunch of time through there coming around to finish lap 4 and Jochen Rind goes very very wide can we ca capitalize on that we can and we are back up in 12th chasing after Innes Ireland once again so not not doing too too good but not doing too bad either we are keeping up with the midfield and that's quite nice hopefully we can gain a couple more positions as we now move on to lap 6 and Innes Ireland breaks very very early coming into Cobbs here and we easily overtake him for 11th now looking at Bruce McLaren who is about 5 tenths of a second up the road hopefully we can catch him soon enough move as we now move on to lap 7 coming through uh, this bright pander here uh, club and Innes Ireland once again manages to overtake us and we are down in 12th once again a lot of position swapping in this race today coming out of Abbey and everyone is a bit slow however not slow enough for us to catch him catch anyone as we now come around to finish lap 7 and we managed to squeeze past Innes Ireland once again for 11th looking at Bruce McLaren once again we close in on Bruce McLaren as we come through Cobbs there hopefully we can keep close and overtake him soon enough we now move on to lap 8th though and I go very wide there allowing Innes Ireland to regain his position so not doing too good at the moment here coming to Abbey make a lunge as we now move on to lap 9 in Ireland overtook Bruce McLaren and now we also overtake Bruce McLaren for 11th once again as we come through out of chapel there and onto the hangar straight chasing after Innes Ireland once again with one second up the road eventually we move on to lap 10 and we overtake Paul Hawkins who was overtaken by Innes Ireland and we're now in 10th however as we come into Woodcut Paul Hawkins manages to regain a pos his position for at least a brief second however we managed to keep in front of him as Ireland went very very wide however he managed to keep his momentum somehow so we're in 10th and then coming through Cops, Paul Hawkins manages to outbreak us and we fall back down to 11th but we keep close as possible and then coming into uh, Beckett here we make a lunge and we are back in 10th steering clear trying not to make a contact with Paul Hawkins we don't want to wipe either him or ourselves out of the race that wouldn't be very prudent as we now manage to pull away from Hawkins a bit moving forward and we managed to make a move on 
in this island who is very slow coming out of Abbey. We're now on lap 11th and we managed to make a move on Frank Gardner as well. So we move up into 8th and looking at Richard Atwood at the moment. He's 5 tenths of a second up the road. And now lap 12 coming out of Abbey. He's slow once again and we managed to pass both Richard Atwood and a lapped car. They're not sure who it was. But we are now in 7th as we come out of Woodcut and Dan Gurney there uh, seemed to go very wide but man manages to keep his momentum somehow. Now moving on to lap 13 and chasing after Dan Gurney still. We are still in 7th. Frank Gardner is right behind us and hopefully we can catch Gurney soon as we take a look at a replay of Ian Ray coming into the pits with a brake problem. Not quite sure how it happened but... There we go and we now see a replay of John Rhodes as well also with a gearbox problem coming through this right hander. Unfortunately his brakes don't work and he crashes into the small hill there. Hopefully he's alright as we now move on to lap 14. Still chasing after Dan Gurney. I go a bit wide, lose control of the car and lose a bunch of time and positions. We are now down in 13th once again. All that work, all that hard work off the window in just one moment of uh, lack of concentration and that costs us dearly as we come around to finish lap 14 we managed to catch back up to everyone Paul Hawkins there making contact with Bob Anderson in front of him allowing us to move into 12 that was uh, could have ended badly for all three of us however we managed to avoid a disaster as we now move on to lap 15 and Paul Hawkins manages to overtake us, so we drop back down into 13th. Not very good. Hopefully we can regain all that loss, all those lost positions somehow. Still on lap 15 coming out of Abbey, and we make a move on Paul Hawkins, who is very slow out of that corner. And we're once again on Bob Anderson's gearbox. Hopefully we can overtake him as well as we come through Woodcut. And we do, we manage to gain one position can we overtake Bruce McLaren as well no not quite he goes wide but manages to keep his speed up somehow as we now come through Woodcut and try and make a very ballsy move on the inside there however McLaren is a bit faster but we somehow managed to inch in front inch ourselves in front of him and we are now in 10th Venus Ireland very slow through maggots there and we move up into ninth that's very nice just a few corners and we managed to gain about four positions there now moving on to lap 17 chasing after frank gardner and he's slow out of maggots so is richard atwood and we outbreak both of them into beckett's and we now are in seventh just one point one place below the points hopefully we can catch joe sifford who is about eight seconds up the road that's a long way to go but we might be able to catch him now moving on to lap 18 and Richard Atwood manages to squeeze through the inside there and we drop down to 8th but hopefully we can catch him once again at some point however coming through uh, club there Frank Gardner also manages to squeeze past and we drop down to 9th that's not very good uh, as the laps are ticking by and we have don't have as much time to try and catch up to the front of the pack as we now move on towards the end of the end of lap 18 someone was at the side of the road there we managed to get past them and we move back into seventh and chasing after frank gardner who is right in front of us just three tenths of a second and we see a replay of Innes ireland coming into the pits with a gearbox problem so his british grand prix is over unfortunately for him as we see him pull into the pits and we also have a replay of Richie Ginzer coming around to post the fastest lap of the race so congratulations to him that's quite good obviously he will be quite happy about that as we now move on to lap 19 and we just make a move on Frank Gardner for sixth place we are in the points now hopefully we can catch Dan Gurney who is about six seconds up the road that would be very nice two points would be very very welcome however we are starting to run out of fuel and it looks like we won't be able to finish the race without refueling 
We now move on to lap 21 and we just passed Joe Siffert and we are really running on fumes at this mo point so unfortunately we will have to go into the pits and lose a lot of time there. Joe Siffert manages to overtake us for fifth. However, I keep close to him and hopefully we can get past him once again. Yes, we do. I kind of push him off the road. Uh, that was a bit unintentional. That wasn't intentional, but it happened. So we are now in fifth. As we now move on to lap 22, trying to get around that car, but Siffert uh, squeezed as fast as I was struggling with trying to overtake the car in front. And at the end of lap 22 I had no option but to come into the pits to refuel because we don't have enough fuel to finish the race and this means we will be losing a bunch of positions and I do not think that we'll be able to get back into the points there, is, there simply aren't enough laps left in the race uh, we are done and we are once again on our way of course there are no there's no speed speed limit in the pit so we can go as fast as we dare through here as we are approaching the pit exit and we rejoin the race in 10th so not very far down but not not very not a very good position either we won't we will try to gain as many positions as possible moving on to lap 23 and I managed to catch up to Bruce McLaren and pass him for ninth place hopefully we can catch up to Brabham as well However, he's almost 10 seconds up the road. That's a lot of work to do. And we catch up to Frank Gardner on lap 26. And can we squeeze through? Yes, we can. And we are now in eighth. We are back in the same position where we started. Two positions below where we started. So not very good. We still have time. Hopefully we can catch up to Richard At Atwood as we take a look at a replay of uh, Jochen Rint who has a suspension problem he pulls to the side he kind of hits the uh, dirt mound on the at the side of the road flips his car and he's out of the race obviously and it looks like whilst uh, we were in the pits Jochen uh, Richie Ginzer sorry managed to lap us so we didn't have as much time as we thought we would have and we see a replay of Richie Ginzer coming around to finish the British Grand Prix win the British Grand Prix so Congratulations for him as now now we come ar around ourselves to finish the race. Not not very happy about that. Could have gone a little bit better. But that is that as we take a look at the race results and we you actually you guys actually saw this last time. Uh I'm sorry about that. Uh, a lot of things have happened uh and and well that's why you you're seeing these results again. The, the results you saw in the previous race were actually from this race. Uh, again, uh, a lot of things happened. I, I'll talk about them a little bit later. But um, anyway, let's move on and see what else. I don't know what I want to talk, say anymore. I'm a bit sh shocked. Anyway, here are the career statistics and this was Andy's 136 Grand Prix. His best start is from first, has 13 pole positions, has set 24 fastest laps, his best finishes in first, has completed 89 races, 70 of them in the points, has won 40 Grand Prix, 4 at the Indianapolis 500, 6 in Monaco, has 8 championships under his belt, has scored a total of 476 points, has retired 47 times, has experienced 2,934 out of 3,613 laps, has 6 bronze trophies, 16 silver trophies, 40 gold trophies and as an extension 40 podiums. And here is a quick look at the championship standings. Jochen Rint moves back into the lead of the championship with Jackie Stewart in 2nd, Graham Hill 3rd, Jack Brabham 4th, Dan Gurney is 5th, Ronnie Bucknam 6th, Andy Hicks fighting with Spence for 7th, the last person to score points is Frank Gardner in 17th and bringing up the bottom of the standings we have Mike Hillwood in 33rd. So those are the driver's standings, let's move on to the constructors now. And here we see Honda mo moving back into the lead of the Constructors Championship with Owen Racing Organization in 2nd, Brabham 3rd, North American Racing Team are 4th, Otello Nucci and Team Lotus fighting for 5th, the last team to score points are John Wilmont Automobiles in 12th and bringing up the bottom of the Constructors are Bob Gerard Racing. So that was the British Grand Prix, a bit of a disappointing result for Andy, obviously we would have liked some points on the board but 
that didn't quite happen unfortunately because well it looks like we have a very very small fuel tank and it couldn't last the entire race and that kind of sucks but hey what can you do and again i apologize for the race for having the uh, bad race result in the previous video but uh, something very bad happened uh, it was totally my fault i um accidentally deleted every single video i made in the past eight or nine months and because of that i was in a rush to try and redo the french grand prix well i only had to re-edit the french grand prix and you probably noticed i there is a new uh intro for the 1965 season that that is as a result of what i did and um well it's not a very good position to be in because now if anything happens to youtube say youtube decides to uh, take down one of my videos or even worse youtube decides to shut down i have no more nothing to fall back on to so it's kind of a shitty situation but yeah that that that's the reason why uh, uh somehow i ended up uh, putting the results from this race to into the previous video i apologize for for that if it was confusing for anyone but i was very very uh, and i'm still am quite uh, disappointed in uh, with myself for doing that unfortunately i i didn't set up a recovery point so i couldn't recover any of that unfortunately but anyway uh, enough about that because the more i think of it the more i'm i feel like i want to jump out a window or something so yeah not a very good position to be in but not much i can do about that anyway our next race is the dutch grand prix at the fantastic zamvoort circuit i'm looking forward to it and that is it for the video don't forget to vote for next season's team link is in the description i also have a second channel where i will be playing all sorts of different games at the moment i'm doing a playthrough of the darkness 2 and the movies so if you're interested in any of those games there will be a link in the description to my second channel as well i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and as always stay sharp <laughs>